Thank you, Scotty. Hi, sir. Thank you for joining me for another FPV News. Today, I'm going to let my nerd show up. We're going to figure out why I'm in a later hosen, and I've got a killer interview for you. So, let's check the radar. What's the matter with this thing? What's all that churning bubbly sound? You call that a radar? No, sir. We call it Mr. Coffee. Care for some? Of course. I know that. I always have coffee when I watch radar. Everyone knows that, don't you? Of course we do, sir! Well, you might have heard of the Tiny Whoop ludicrous speed motors. Newbie Drone decided to take it to the next level and figure out what happens when you actually hit ludicrous speed. Warp speed, Mr. Zulu! What? was that? Newbie drone. They've gone plaid. Newbie drone has just released their brushed plaid motors. These are set to compete with the Tiny Whoop Ludicrous Speed. They're a step down from their Unicorn motors. These are 22,500 kV. They do recommend you sport these with the Venom Biblade props that they have to help increase performance with freestyle and battery life. But they're not done there. They're not building some Cuisinart, but they do have more information on their micro brushless quad. Their flight controller will have a VTX built in that will have 25 to 200 milliwatts power. They said it won't have a receiver on it, but it will support FR Sky, DSM, Crossfire, and Fly Sky. No spaceship is complete without a holodeck, right? Let's take a trip. Ooh, later hosing and everything, huh? Sure doesn't feel like a hologram. So I figured we'd stop over in Germany and check out Micro Squad. They make micro quads. They have 75 and 65 brushed and brushless micro drones, including this little guy. The Black Mamba 75. It's a 2 to 3S micro drone with an F4 processor, all in one 8 amp ESC, and has 1103 11,000 kV motors. Now, uh, let's get into something a little more comfortable. There we go. That's better. Next up is a company I've been tracking down for a while, trying to get the lowdown. We saw them at CES and haven't heard from them since. So everybody, please welcome Sutter Jen from Orca FPV. Oh, it's my, my pleasure. So uh, we saw a lot of great information coming out of CES. Josh Bardwell did a great live Q&A, and your goggles are looking amazing. You have the OLED, 44 degree uh, field of view, 56 to 74 uh, IPD adjustability. It can take up to 6S battery, I think you guys were saying. You're really uh, marketing a premium product. So uh, last time you said you were going to delay it a little bit, and work on some aspects, and you're going to get rid of the inner eye strain relief so you can make the goggles a little more narrow and just smaller and maybe save some weight. How's that going? Uh, so, yeah, basically our original release date was uh, around just about now. Uh, so when we were going to the CES, uh, we, this is, this is the, the release date that we were gunning for. Uh, but some of the feedback that we got from the CES and some of our own findings really compelled us to kind of push that back uh, and uh, be able to, you know, release a product that uh, we would want to release. So, you know, as, as you mentioned, one of these uh, changes uh, that we have uh, decided to make, and I, I should say that, you know, this change was one of the biggest changes that uh, kind of uh, required the most re-engineering was uh, uh, indeed the removal of uh, eye relief mechanism. Uh, it, was, it was like a risk-reward ratio that was not too favorable. So we decided just to get rid of that, to have a more simple product. Uh, and as an added bonus, it allowed us to reduce the overall size of the product. So, you know, the, the, the goggles, the, the models that we have now, 
and the production version is going to have 20% less volume than the one that we presented at the CES. That's great. 20% off of it is amazing. That saves in weight. I mean, you don't have this big bulky thing hanging off your face also. And uh, we lost uh, that kind of pointiness. So they're not as pointy as they were uh, before. And that pointy thing was, you know, some, something that people loved or hated. So we still have this recognizable design, but, you know, the, the, this whole... Uh, 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 front of the goggles is a bit more, bit more uh, shorter. So you know, this took us a lot of, lot of engineering work, and uh, most of the delay was due to these redesigned uh, changes. We we added some more stuff uh, or subtracted some more stuff, but ultimately, you know, we are uh, now we are happy with with what we have. We we've, we've redesigned the uh, IPD mechanism, which gives it more precision. Uh, it, it's it's nicer feel to, to, to hand so yeah a, a, a couple of a couple of surprises too. Uh, I know some other people were talking about like colors and stuff. I think you mentioned maybe a navy blue or something or mm. uh, I think people were more worried about being black in the hot sun getting real hot over time. Do you have any heat issues with that or do you have any colors that you're already thinking about? Uh, whenever we send a send send out the newsletter, we get a lot of mail back. And I'm trying to respond uh, personally to every email. And, you know, the type of people that will ask about the color black issue will be the type of people that will write to you the, you know, the long. So they're, they're really uh, enthusiastic about, you know, passionate about that sort of thing. So we decided, yeah, you know, it, it's going to be an issue for uh, uh, a few people, uh, but they're going to be very, feel very strong about it. So we said, you know, let's, 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 uh, yeah, there's, there, there has to be a lot of silent people about that out there. So we decided, yeah, what the hell, let's, let's, let's get another color in the, in the, uh, uh, in the offering. So, you know, the general plan is to have an alternative non-black color, uh, which, uh, if you ask me which one, I'm, I'm kind of inclined to say either navy gray, navy blue, that sort of, you know, to keep up with the stealth kind of look and feel, uh, but we're, we're, we yet have to do the renders with the uh, new, uh, new uh, shell design, and uh, we'll be releasing those uh, rather soon. You guys always mention that you're, you're going to be a premium goggle, and it shows with the parts that you're putting in there, the, the Sony OLED screen and everything. You also have a uh, sensor, so when you take your goggles off, you know, it, it shuts down the screen and certain aspects like that. But what are you going to be taking out to do the more cost-effective version that you guys mentioned that you're going to try and implement? The, the junior uh, version of, of uh, uh, FP1 is, is basically going to have a smaller panel, a smaller OLED panel. And uh, we're going to go with, uh, uh, I think it's 0 0.36 inch uh, a panel. So it's like if FPV-1 is a 100 inch TV, uh, the junior model is going to be a 70 inch TV or 80, 70 inch TV. Uh, so it, it, it's, about, it's about the screen real estate that you get. So, and, and, and this alone will, you know, have the desired uh, cost effects that will make the junior products much more affordable. Have you guys added anything else in while you're doing that? You know, you're getting a bit of an exclusive as it is because we're today we're sending out our newsletter. Uh, so I've, I've, you know, a lot of, a lot of things that, I, that I've uh, told you, uh, they were supposed to be announced in the, in the newsletter. So you, you, you got the, you got the exclusive even before. Well, our, this, this won't know, actually go out for a week either. So. Uh. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry about that. But, That's okay. But some of these ideas were actually the ideas that uh, our fans came up with. So as I said, you know, we get a lot of email, people, you know, saying, you know, wouldn't it be great if you could uh, put this in or put that in, and you know, a lot of these ideas are, you know, cannot are not feasible. You know, when you get into the technical details of it, you realize that it's, you know, it can't be really done in 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 a cheap uh, way, or it we can't do it uh, realistically. So we don't delay the, the, the release schedule. But some of the ideas were like, hmm, this is really interesting. Let's, let's, let's think about that. So there's a couple of those ideas that we actually decided to say, you know what? 
there, we can do it. You know, we can we can add a bit more engineering work into it. And yeah, let's do it. Let's try it. If it works, let's do it. So you know, some of these ideas got It'd be wonderful that you're really listening to the community and implementing ideas, or at least listening to them. Uh, this community for FPV is a real tight niche community uh, because we've all gone through the struggles of FPV and troubleshooting, beta flight, building, soldering and stuff. So I feel that makes us a lot closer. I, th I think, you know, it, it has to do with the fact that uh, a lot of our guys are uh, also FPV pilots. A lot of our engineers are FPV pilots. So it's not it's, it's not really difficult to when when you know when you want to have this some 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 feature that you're really excited about. It's, it's not really difficult to, to motivate people to, you know, work on that. And, you know, as I said, we do have uh, an in-house engineering team and it's much easier for us to kind of test these things out really fast and see whether that makes sense or is, is, it, is it technically and economically feasible. When you guys move forward next year, you'll probably try and implement more, take some more things out. I mean, this is version one of Orca, so I feel like you guys have a lot to grow upon. Oh, oh yes, but also you know we are a newcomer to this industry, and we want to position our brand and be our brand to be recognized as uh, you know one of the leading brands in FPV. So you know we have set the bar for ourselves really high, and this is this is you know this is why we didn't want to get uh, into the market with a junior product and then release a senior product. We wanted to for our first product to be you know the best. Thing out there. You're going up against Fat Shark, which is basically the standard in the industry. I mean, there's other goggles out there, but let's be honest, you go to a race, 80-90% of the people are running Fat Shark. So for you guys to try and wiggle your way into the scene and take a cut of their profit, you got to throw everything out there. And I think you're doing it right. You're also not taking pre-orders. You're not building a lot of hype. And everybody's looking for another option from Fat Shark. They, Fat Shark makes good goggles, but they've shown they don't listen to the community too well. It was it was about timing. So CS is in January, and our product timeline, or you know, our the development timeline was not. Uh, you know, we would not have uh, gone out uh, that early. But uh, you know, when we won, uh, we got. Uh, a lot of media attention here in Croatia. Uh, local FPV community picked us up. They shared our, you know, products on a couple of, you know, strategic Facebook groups, and just, you know, things got out of out of out of control. So basically, you know, uh, if we were able to control that, and uh, we would have come out uh, publicly uh, a bit later, uh, and probably wouldn't go to CES and wouldn't get that feedback that we did. But you know, uh, it's 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 it is what it is. Uh, we you know, expectation was that we were going to be releasing the product uh, sometimes nowish. It turns out that we're going to have to delay it for a couple of months. So now we're we're on the new uh, uh, schedule and yeah. Cool. Well, I mean. Sometimes when you get on a good path and you get some momentum, things seem to line up. And I think maybe that's what CES did for you guys is your product was starting and things were working out. And then things seem to line up, like getting with your community in Croatia and then going to CES and building that momentum. So sometimes when you're doing things right, doors open up for you by themselves. Uh, yeah. Diving into the last couple things, everybody's real curious on when you guys are planning on announcing your goggles and the obvious price point. So uh, the, the new release date is uh, mid this year, so it's going to be definitely this year. We're gunning for mid this year as a release date. Uh, and as for the price point, I think we've communicated that we're going to keep the price below 700 bucks, which is, again, I will say very aggressively priced uh, because if you can uh, product, if you, if you consider you know, how much it costs to build, how much it costs to buy all the components, this should be a thousand bucks product what sets us apart is the ambition and the bet really to have the guts to say okay let's let's bet that you know this can be you know this fpv technology can find other uses outside of what we know as an fpv market today and it, it's 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 you know we we want to kind of extend that market but ultimately you know uh, the uh the community will will be the, 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 the beneficiary of that bat. And like you guys said, you you want to implement good quality products, you want to come out guns blazing, you want to come out showing your best foot forward, 
And I think that's what you guys are doing. You're creating a great product. You're listening to the community. And I think you're going to have a really good time fitting in with the FPV community with your hospitality, your uh, communication with everybody, and putting out a solid product. Now, thank you for the opportunity to tell this story. Thank you again, Orca, for spending a little time with us. And now to look on the other end of a goggle situation is the TBS EVO VTX transmitter. This one weighs 7 grams, can take 2S to 6S power, can output 25, 100, 400, and 800 milliwatts, and the best part about this is if you want to change channel, you can just say R4, 200 watts, 100 watts, 400 milliwatts power, throw the barcode up to the camera and and the camera changes for you all by itself. You do not need a special camera. The VTX recognizes it similar to a QR code. And the perfect pair to that TBS Evo is the TBS XF race antenna. This little guy is meant more for your micro mini drones where weight is more of a priority than your range. They do recommend that you mount this in the vertical position, vertical as you're flying, and to keep it away from conductive metals as much as possible to help optimize the performance. If you're looking for a frame this summer, Rebel has just released their third rendition of the Ruxus frame. This is the free range Ruxus, and they offer two different antenna setups that come in 14 different colors, 3D printed in TPU plastic. They claim to have solved the arm slot problem where the arms start to wiggle a little bit after a lot of abuse and use. This frame comes in 5 inch, 6 inch, and 7 inch setup, and the arms are 10 millimeter thick carbon fiber. If the Rebel frame's not for you, then try out Twin Quad frames. They've just released their Ripsaw, and this frame can be configured in four different setups. The Freestyle, Stretch X, Long Range, and Dead Cat. Dead Cat? Is that what... Oh, that's messed up. You can place your electronics in two different spots if it's a 30 by 30, and four different spots if it's a 20 by 20, which gives you plenty of options for extras like GPS or DVR. Now that you got your new frame and it's all built up for the summer, you gotta slap a camera on there to record all the epic footage. So check out Fox here and their new Box 2 camera. This is a GoPro session style camera that can record in 4K 30 frames per second, 1080p 120 frames per second, or 720p 240 frames per second if you wanna get some really killer slow motion. The Box 2 is priced out at about $130, which makes it a pretty good competitor to the GoPro. And now to talk about our featured pilot. Today we're gonna to take a look at Max. He's seven years old and he goes by Splatoon Kid. He's from Rockland, California, and he loves pizza, creating tracks on the DRL sim, and then racing them. But we're not just gonna feature Max. We're gonna feature his dad, Tommy, too, because he's doing something right. He's getting his kid interested in a hobby and something that he's gonna pursue education all by himself because he's enjoying the game, the sport, the hobby of drone FPV. And whatever you're doing out there, get these kids interested in something that makes them use their brain. That's gonna wrap up this episode of FPV News. If you're looking for the contest, it's gonna be over on my Facebook page. I'm gonna please ask everyone to help share my FPV News episodes to help me get a little more traction on YouTube. As always, like, share, subscribe, and until next time, keep ripping packs.